Hello Rejects, this is uh, Old Man RJ. Uh, we are doing a, uh, a special, a wish list, just like we did when uh, we did the Batman movies where, you know, I did the 89 films based on like what would happen if um, Michael Keaton didn't stop making movies mm -hmm. and he kept doing more uh, sequels. Mm -hmm. And then Tony Gere did based on uh, Grump Voice Batman. So, this time I'm doing mine. Of course, he did it. I'm Christian Bale. I'm gonna be nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, you're not supposed to be here. So, I did mine. Uh, this time we're focusing on Spider Man. Uh, all y'all know that the new movie came out with Tom Holland. And, uh, badass film. A right. Badass film that I haven't came seen out. It yet, but I already heard about it. It's pretty awesome. Yep. And <laughs> once he sees it, he's gonna see why it's so good. <laughs> so, we decided to do another wish list based on. Uh, me, I would do Tobey Maguire and Sam Raimi. Antonio Kidd is going to focus on his favorite Spider-Man, which is Andrew, Andrew Garfield yes. and Mark Webb. Oh, yes. I'm going to pick out my villains and my casting for them. And then Antonio Kidd is going to do his for his films. Alright, so I picked out three movies I got. Uh, the first one... Oh, and by the way, this is actually the season finale of our show. We're ending it on a high note with Spider-Man. Why, thank you. Thank you very much. We'll be back in March. We are going to do some, uh, we'll have some specials. Like, we're going to have the Reject Rumble again. For those of you who know, because WrestleMania 8, 18, and 28 were crazy uh, matches that we could rebuild or re or keep the way they were. Uh -huh. We'll see. So, here we go. Uh, Sam Raimi, he ended with the third one. So me and is like, I'm not going to do it no more. Raimi like, I'm not going to do it no more. Actually, they were planned to come back. That's the fun part of it. They were planning to come back to do part four. Yeah. Part four was going to actually have the Vulture. And the Vulture was going to be played by John Malkovich. Who's that? Uh, you ever watched the movie uh, Red with Bruce yes. Willis? Remember that old man? Oh, okay. He was a rounders. He played the the, the European cardman at the end of the movie. Oh, the ball-headed guy. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, John Malkovich, okay. he was going to be cast as a vulture in that movie. Mm, you know what? At that time, it would have made sense because I think he made Con Air around that point and he wasn't that, you know, weird looking. Let's put it that way. He looked like a, 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 a broke-ass uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin <laughs> in that film. But, okay, that would have made sense in the vulture, as a vulture in there. Now, okay. Originally, he had Cass and Hathaway as Black Cat. Mm -hmm. Me, I don't. I would take Anne Hathaway out of there. Because I have a different choice for Black Cat, and yeah. it's Elijah Kubert. Uh-huh. Now, if you don't know who Elijah Kubert is, you ever uh -huh. have watched the movie called The Girl Next Door? The Girl Next Door. It's with the guy who plays Speed Racer. Yes. That cute blonde girl in that movie? Yes, the main girl. I would choose her as Black Cat. At that time frame, she had she had the look for it. Yeah. Okay, I hear you. We're good. So, that's your storyline, you know, Peter Parker has to take on Vulture. Yeah. Of course, Vulture will not be made the way that, uh, this is a Ramiverse world, so, of course, Vulture had to be mutated somehow and become Vulture the way he does by mutation. Right, in the actual cartoon. Yeah, so I guess he would actually be taking youth away, so it'd be crazy to see how Peter Parker turns into an old man because of the Vulture. Facts. That would be cool to see. Sure. Um, Black Cat, of course, that would be another storyline to figure out because... I wonder if they would still mention how they got the formula from Captain America knowing that this is a Sony movie and not a Marvel. And this is way before the Marvel movies even happened, so this True. is, you know... So what would they have had a connection with Sony and Marvel enough to be like, all right, we plan on using this. We may, We're well, not going to use the name, but we're going to use the serum name of it and figure out where they got it from, the backstory. Not, at, not saying Captain America, but say that they had a project... Based on a, a on a, a super serum, and they stole it like that. Like, and the funny in a sense. thing is, I don't think even Disney owned the rights yet to Captain Marvel. America. Nah, no, you're right. I don't think they fully own the rights tomorrow because it wasn't until they um, when they made Iron Man is when a little bit before that. That's when they purchased the whole setup, and Iron Man came in way after freaking Spider -Man. Spider Man. So yeah, agreed. So it would be interesting to see who, like, if they were just talking to Marvel themselves and said, hey, can we use Captain America here? Right, exactly. And how much do we have to pay for that? Right, exactly. So, okay, so that's part one. Mm -hmm. um, I would not have had Kristen Dunst in this movie. 
if they broke up, it would have been interesting to see Peter Parker having to hook up with uh, Black Felicia, Cat. Uh, yeah, Black Cat in this mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And of course, Gwen Stacy would have been in it since she was in the, you know, in the first film, in yeah. the third one. I mean, right. All right. So at the end of this film, I guess Gwen Stacy and Parker, she might have like she breaks up with them, so she doesn't die. Okay. I make it. She breaks up, moves away, goes to Paris or something. Uh huh. All right. So now Spider-Man Five. This is where the lizard becomes the lizard. Doc Connors becomes the lizard, played by Dylan Baker. Right. He becomes a lizard. That's the villain. And then the next villain next to him is Craven the Hunter. But here's the catch. These two are good guys in this movie because the actual villain is Spider-Man himself who turns into a real spider. Hey. Oh, so Remember you're making that? it into a real spider now. Okay. All right, my bad. Yeah, heck yeah. That was one of my favorite cartoons parts. That, that, that saga. That part of the saga mm -hmm. was actually a good story. That okay. should be part five right there. Lizard and Craven okay. had to hunt this spider down to bring him back to being normal. Okay. At the end, it ends up with them to, like, carrying Peter Parker and making him human again. Gotcha. My bad. All right, now part six. And again, uh, Kristen Dunst comes back. Casting, uh, Kristen Dunst would be Mary Jane again. Mm-hmm. I would cast Gerard Butler as Craven the Hunter. Gerard Butler is uh, the guy from 300. Right. Well, back then when he was actually in shape. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And now here it is. The last movie. I'm only doing three people. The third one would be called Spider-Man 6. But it won't be called Spider-Man 6. It would be called Spider-Man vs. The Sinister 6. Gotcha. It will be the sixth movie in this franchise. So yeah. it will be just the right part to do it yeah and my six people are Mysterio uh huh Scorpion uh huh Shocker okay Rhino uh huh Chameleon and the Lizard who's actually sometimes he can't control himself so he could be bad guy or good guy right he can go vice versa and he can actually at the end help out Spider-Man yeah okay Mysterio will be played by Bruce Campbell he's been in all the Spider-Man movies like in part one he was that guy who announced them into the like, what? That's a crazy name. I'm going to call you the Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, I know you're... T okay, like, even in the in the second one, he plays the... The, the guy who, gun, like... The doorsman yeah. in that one. Letting them do, like, be quiet, you know, things. You can't go And then oh, the third shoes. one, he's a waiter. <laughs> yeah, okay, gotcha. So, in this one, he finally... It, it appears all that time, he was just an actor trying to get a role. Yeah. And he's studying all these roles and stuff. And that's yeah. why now he's an actor, but he failed. And now they and got that mysterious. little machinery and becomes Mysterio. Yep. Yep. Very good. For Scorpion, I would get Burgess Jenkins. Who that? Uh, he comes out and remember the Titans? Uh-huh. Uh, remember, there's a point in the movie where the quarterback, he like... He, Sunshine? Uh, no, before Sunshine. The other oh, guy? Yeah. Okay. He doesn't get uh, protection much because the guy keeps moving out of the way. So he gets... Well, the guy who moves out of the oh, way is that, that bad dude. Right. He has a face of a scorpion. Okay. So I think he would be good for scorpion. Gotcha. Next is Shocker. Shocker is Wood Harris. Uh -huh. Wood Harris is the guy who comes who comes out as Creed's trainer in the Creed movie. Okay. That's Wood Harris. He would be Shocker for me. Okay. And Shocker would actually have the two arms doing like the shocking thing since mm -hmm. this is all um, Remy. Remy, you know. Yeah. Rhino, Ryan Hurst. Ryan Hurst came on Remember the Titans. He's the second captain of the team, or I think he's the captain of the football team. Yeah. He'll be Rhino. Okay. He's built up like it. He knows how to play football, so he knows how to run and everything. Facts. Chameleon by Crispin Glover. Glover. Crispin Glover. Uh-huh. Crispin Glover is the bad guy in uh, three girls movie. Um... Three Very girls, good. Drew Barrymore, Cameron Diaz, and Lucy Liu. Chris Angels? I mean, uh, Charlie's Angels? Charlie's Angels. Okay. He's a bad guy. He's a stick figure dude who, like, runs. Oh, once, like, does, like, a weird, you yeah. know, uh, set, not somersault, but, like, uh, eh, I know what you're talking about. Like, does a weird little move. Yeah. Like a car wheel? Yeah, car wheel. There you go. He's Crispin Glover. He's okay. a good actor. He came out in uh, Back to the Future, part yeah. one. Right. He would be commanding for me. He does that. <laughs> that weird ass laugh. Yeah. That fucking weird guy. Okay. And then Lizard will be Dun and Baker again. Come okay. back for his role. Spider Man takes him on. He needs help. Black Cat comes around again to help him out. Yeah. Uh, MJ's back in there again. You have a little love triangle going on. 
Okay. But that would be my movie. That's my sixth uh, film, and yeah. that's the way I end the trilogy. You know, the six films and of uh, Toby McGuire. Oh, the cookie crumbles. Okay, got it. All right, Tony Kid. Andrew Garfield now? Uh huh. All right, Mark you and Andrew Garfield. All right, Mark Webb and Andrew Garfield. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking right now. So, what have I? What have I? Let's put it this way. What have I made a trilogy of the movies? What have I gone the extent of what you did? With all six movies and continuation like that, right? Mm-hmm. Even though we had the incalation of they were making a number four. I would stick with Andrew Garfield num- three trilogies with Spider-Man right now at the moment. Because at least at least at least with three Spider-Man movies, you have the idea of doing spin-off movies. The third one definitely can set you up of doing spin-offs. And then revamping back into it as maybe another, another number four. But even then, you can even at that point still retitle it, if you like. Right? So, when they brought back this amazing Spider-Man, the idea of it was evolving the parent's story. Figuring out what it was for Peter Parker to find out about his parents. All that backstoryness affects the whole timeline. So, what you got is a good setup. For all the continuations for movies, for all three Andrew Garfield movies, okay? It's a good setup for the sense of, you know, he's trying to figure out who his parents are, which then leads in the first movie to the field trip to Oscorp because he wants to know what it is that they're doing there, what it possibly was for his involvement for his dad, what was he, what department was he under in that sense, you know what I mean? So he's looking. What if I had um, Mary Jane in this movie instead of Gwen Stacy? Let's, let's put it this way. Gwen Stacy, I think, was more of a love entrance in college. I don't think Gwen was pre, pre-high school or anything like that. So if you're in high school, you got to add Mary Jane. But that doesn't mean you have to start the love entrance for Peter Parker then. You could have Andrew Garfield with the actress that what they were actually originally portraying uh, for Mary Jane in high school, she would have been in the first one. She just would have been a good close friend, you know. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? That would be a good idea. If she would have been a good close friend uh, in the first film. Yeah, because she already was a love interest, so he's not, you know, really, you know, he doesn't, he's not, because he's not necessarily emo-ish, but he's more set. His mind is not focused on that. His mind is more focused on the parents. So he's like, okay, cool. I can appreciate you being, you know, you know, so and so. Gwen is the one that has a little bit of feelings for Peter Parker. You know, thinks he's cute, all that type of stuff or whatever. So, you know, Mary Jane helps him get her or helps her get him type of scenario in that sense, right? So at least you have the connection there, okay? I wouldn't be too much in in the badness of evolving the first film, even also having Flash Gordon. Is it is it Flash Gordon or who's uh yeah Flash who's the, is the basketball player the ba- right Flash Gordon is the one mm-hmm. okay yeah so you can have Flash Gordon who was portrayed by Joe whatever in your Rami verse so you would have had another high school kid that was probably pre you know pre famous at this point right now and really trying to make a name for himself in here so you can evolve him into it because you can reuse him again as a you know mini. Muscle Man for the next coming films or whatever, right? Against well, this in the Amazing Spider-Man, he was used as a basketball player. Yeah, so you can add him into a little bit extra and later on. Like let's say, you know, let's say Nor- Norman founds out that his high school or whatever, so he's gonna hire Flash and say, "Hey, look, you want to make some extra money, kid? Oh, here's you want to get some powers or blah blah blah. Turn him into Hydro Guy or whatever, and then have him fight Spider-Man." So, a little something. But it's a connection. Let me, let me keep continuing. Let me continue. Let me continue. Let me continue. So, you could do something like that. But the first one, definitely, I would not change what they're doing with the lizard. Because, in essence, you find out that he gets his powers. The lizard himself, the actor that portrays the doctor. Um, old man, RJ, put up your phone real quick, please, because we want to give names. I, I want to give names, too. You were sophisticated enough to add names, okay? So, please, can you Google... Amazing Spider-Man for me and do the cast because I would like to add names on there, please. No, because I did my homework. No, I did my homework. I, I go to high school. Look at you. <laughs> I actually went to high school and graduated. Thank you very much. Yeah, I did too. So, whatever. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Give me a second. Let me see if That's it fine, goes guys. up. We want, we want cast. I want cast members. I'm going to give you guys names. Okay, so 
He was played by Rifus Infants. Okay, you could you title for me. So okay. Rifus Infants. What? Rifus Infants. Infants. Dr. Curtis Connor. Yes. So keep him as Dr. Curtis Connor. I wouldn't have changed that part. But you also know that Peter Parker is looking for someone who's connected with his fa- his family, his mom and dad. So he, on the sense of knowing that he was best friends with his dad, he wanted to help out Peter. So there, you know, now it becomes the mentorship. This becomes the relationship of a, a not necessarily a father figure type, but somebody who's willing to come out in you know, order shell and help him out as much as much as he can, right? But all in the same sense of that, you know, he has his own family, his own wife and son, and he wants to have that arm. He wants to be be able to be the dad that will be there for his son in a different way that he that than he can at this moment, right? So that's pretty much what his, of course, that's what his science is about. What material they can use from animals that can probably use for humans in order to get relimb themselves. You know, fix any uh, sc- scraff, scaling scraff if for burn victims and all that type of stuff. What that's his science in Oscorp. So that helps out with Peter trying to figure out the past, right? Mm-hmm. So become a mentorship. All of a sudden, you get Peter Parker. Of course, you're getting bit. You got the bite. Then I would again, I would take away the whole mechanics of. Having web shooters and all that baloney, okay? I would take away that. I like Rami's version of having webs inside the body. Oh, so like regular... Yeah. Inside the arm, like... Uh, organic. Bark. Yeah, organic. Exactly. Because it makes more sense of you being bit by a spider. You could, what, why would you be called spider? Just because you crawl on walls? I mean, a lot of bugs can crawl on walls. So what is it? So you get the web shooting. Who, who, who has webs? Spider has webs. So bam, you got that part, right? So that goes. Uh, what else we got with the story? So you're gonna get into get into him becoming Spider-Man, him trying to help out people, of course, and obviously Lizard, the actor, the doctor, Doctor Connors, Dr. finds Connors. finds out that the only reason how you got that is because you got bit by a human, you bit by my radioactive spider, right? And the only ones that have that is us here, at Oscorp. The only person that I've known that came to my lab recently was Peter Parker, right? So. He finds out Peter. He tells Peter, listen, you got to help me. Let me get that. You know, let me get the same thing you got. Maybe this could help me get my limb and all that type of stuff. Peter says, no, no, no. I can't help you, Doc. It's not good for you. It's going to mess you up and blah, 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 whatever. Then, you know, now he becomes a mad scientist just wanting to experiment on himself. He does so. He puts it like he, he gives it to himself and everything and thus begins, you know, him becoming lizard. And all of a sudden now the fighting between each other. So it's not necessarily a evil niche in Doc Connors. It was more or less of jealousy and you don't want me to be better type of thing. You don't want me to fix myself the way that you fix yourself. Exactly. Without knowing the consequences probably. Exactly. And this way you're like, you know, it's not fair. Like this, see, this is the reason why your dad left and stuff like that. Like he he was the same way. He didn't want to help me and all that type of stuff and scenario. He didn't, he didn't think my idea was going to be good. And all that, whatever. And but it's more or less also too that the serum that he took in order for him to become lizard also affect affected his mental state. So it made it basically times ten on the evilness part, right? So it takes until the end of the movie to kind of clarify what it is, what's going on with the, you know, without without going on with him and evolving his family into the picture again to say, look, doc. It's not you. It's just it's just the serum. This is the reason why, like, you know, I didn't want you taking it. It's not because I don't want it for you. I love your family. Like, this is great. Like, you are like my family and stuff. You know, try to bring in that scenario. And um, what's it called? Like, I don't want anything to, wrongly to happen to you. So please don't, you know, don't do this or whatever. So thus turns, you know, the lizard and turning himself in and all that type of stuff. Right? Not yeah. dying. Because that's one thing about the lizard where I didn't like. He dies in the movie. Thank you. He should have survived. He should stay that mentorship for for um Toby, not Toby Maguire, so for Andrew Garfield Spider Man throughout the series because this way you help him figure out any science stuff that he needs to go to. I understand that you know. Or like if he's having competitions with his body and stuff. Th- different he could scenarios. Go to him and yeah, I think that's the one thing I didn't like about the Raimi verse too is that. Doc Connors and that one should have done the same thing. Like, he should have been... He should have known Parker's identity. In yes. mine, I would have had Parker, like, 
to make mine different from yours. Right. Toby could have gone to him and been like, hey, Doc, you know, I got bit by a spider while I went to the field trip, you know. And now that he has these powers, he could have gone to him and been like, hey, you know, I was on the trip, got bit. And all of a sudden, this is happening to me. Yep. I need, like, I need some what, help. can you help some guidance. me out? Can you, yeah, can you do some tasks? And Doc could have done tasks, look at him, and, you know, you all right, you're, you know, you're a spider. You're turning into, like, this and that, and you got your genes Eventually got to, time. Yeah. Eventually time, you're going to end up mutating. So, you get, we got to we'll figure out something. But at and, least that. And that would have led up to mine, because I also didn't like the fact that, like, all his, his villains got killed off. Like, it makes sense why they killed off, especially in this movie. But I wish it wouldn't have happened that way. Exactly. I feel like the whole thing with killing off the villains kind of det- is detrimental to the story of what you want to bring out to the film. Because this could help. I understand there's money involved with contracts and all that type of stuff. But nowadays, people are, you know, we as a society already are cool with the fact that if we're going to continue this role as as my act, be, me being an actor or an actress that it's going to be cool because my fans are going to love it. So I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do what's best for the fans in order to get more fan base, to get more money in my pocket, and to put out there for the greater good, right? So Mm -hmm. nowadays it's better. He probably would have been just fine returning as a lizard. Well, I don't know if he did or not just yet, but, you know. So, uh, you stole it from me. You said, nah. The Remy one, no. Yeah, okay, good. Excuse me, I got to belch, guys. Um... What's the call? So, at this point right now, he turns himself in. He's not Lizard no more. He's, you know, such a, you know, becoming a good guy and stuff like that. Goes into jail for temporary basis, right? Well, it goes into jail at this moment now. That ends this whole thing. So, that means what changes it does for the original film? Well, it changes the fact that the police officer, played by, um, what's his face? The guy oh. from uh, that one show. It's right there on your Google machine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. yes. Sorry, I forgot his name. Uh, Dennis Leary. Dennis Leary. Okay. It changes that. It changes his role a bit. It makes him not die. Keeps him to survive. And survives out through the next, next future films. Right? So, basically... That's whatever. You know, Dennis Leary, I don't think you would have had a really a focus point on him at all. He just would have been the grumpy been, cop. Uh, you know it would have been interesting if he used him as a cop who's chasing Spider-Man. Throughout the time. I would yeah. okay with that. That's okay. With, I'm okay with that. But also helping out with... Um, Peter Parker. No, no, no. Um, what's it called? The uh, the uh, the reporter. Oh. Uh, Jamie Jonathan. Jonathan? Yes, helping him out and stuff like that. They don't <laughs> like Spider-Man, so they're wanting to... Make and the it'd media. be weird if he likes Peter Parker because he's hooked up with Gwen. That and, too. But he doesn't like Spider-Man. Yeah, exactly. So, at this point right now, the love interest between Spider-Man really hasn't, you know, become anything. They just know that... All we know is that Gwen is interested in uh, Peter Parker. Then it kind of gives them that sense of, like, I'll give it a shot. I'll date and stuff like that. You know, Doc was right. I need to make my own path, my own future. So, I'm going to do that. You know, Mary Jane was right, too. She is a good woman. Let me take a chance and, you know, we'll become something or whatever. So, you know, he dates. Mary Jane's doing her thing in high school. But in high school, you get that, you know, cross vision where they're passing each other in high school. And, you know, Mary Jane has that look like, I wish it was me type of look. But no. it's okay. I'm happy. So, bam. You get that little love interest for them and you pass it off, There's right? There's triangle going on. Yeah. yeah. Even there, there being one. There you go. Exactly. So... And the second one, then you put out there, they go to college. Now they're in college and stuff. Now, I'll mind you, I don't think Harry Osborne should have been brought up in part two. What I do believe is that part one should have definitely involved Harry Osborne as well. Him coming into high school or at that in the news media, you know, Harry Osborne, you know, the, the, the future of Oscorp and stuff like that, moving over to, you know, so-and-so. It could have been, you know how, like, Parker went to Oscorp? Right. He could have been uh, the reason why Parker was able to get in. Was that? He could have gone with them, and they both could have gone into that 
into that place together. Right, because they knew for a fact that, look, oh, oh, it's you, Harry. Like, nice to see you. We haven't seen you since we were kids. You know, when my dad was playing with, you know, my, when I was here with my dad at the lab, helping out and stuff like that, we haven't seen each other since then. How things are going. They're, you know, they don't have to be the best friends scenario, but they could be friends enough to where they cross paths and, like, they're just cool with each other because, you know, we were kids. We, we had fun. You know what I'm saying? We were friends. So, boom. Let it be like that. Right? So, Holly, you know what would make it interesting though? Mm-hmm. What if Harry doesn't have much friends, being a rich kid and all? Right. So he becomes good friends with Peter. And he he like he kind of over overdoes it. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Like he kind of gives him and caters to him way too much because that's the only kid Especially that he knows. Especially when his uncle dies, he like he pays for the burial. He right. does all this. Like he could have built something up where Harry's just too obsessed of a friendship. Right. But. I also wouldn't kill Uncle Ben in the first film. I would keep Uncle Ben going forward. Okay? So there's a mixture there. So part one gives that involvement of fighting on his parents, but also kind of on a distant relationship between him and his uncle and his aunt. Like he kind of begins this relationship where it's not it's not what it was. I appreciate what you do, but it's not it's not there. You know what I mean? Like, it becomes a resentment. Like, how come you're not helping me look for my dad or my parents and all that type of stuff? Like, it's not cool. But these guys are. Doc Connors is talking to me about my past, even though you didn't want me talking to him um, and all that type of stuff. Right. So that begins that relationship there, too, as well. Part two comes out. Part two gives us more more connection and figuring out about the parents and you get the I love the fact that they gave us the clip about what happened to him on the plane and all that stuff whatever bam I love that part give us more of that keep that in there and then you have now obviously uh, Peter Parker talks with Doc Connors they have a better relationship Gwen and him are going strong Mary Jane's becomes an actress now in college and she's doing her little thing um, Peter at some you know Tends her stuff, whatever, with Harry here and there. They like going, you know, they like about that stuff. Then you also have him and, you know, Uncle Ben and Aunt May, just more or less of the grumpy old, grumpy old parents and all that type of stuff, like him leaving and not coming home and on time and all that type of stuff. So that begins that scenario. Now, the actual villain for this one, I would definitely keep Electro, okay? The reason why I say keep Electro, you guys, is because you would have had Jamie Foxx but in different limelight than this goofy version of what we got for he's this like goofy kid in in a sense and like no one knows me change that role change that up have him actually be a smart ass scientist okay have him be a smart ass scientist be in the electrical field and working for Oscorp still works working for Oscorp still trying to figure out you know different ways for proper electricity or energy based and all that type of stuff and you get all of that you get all of that, right? What if he was studying the eels? You know how like he's going into it? Uh-huh. What if he was studying those eels to find a better way to generate electricity like they do? The way, yeah, exactly. The way eels create electricity on their own. How do you create that within yourself, right? So his whole science is based on that. Now, again, Oscorp seems like they're interested in animal type of mutation. What can an animal help out for human growth or anything? Because obviously you got the lizard, you got Spider-Man... You're eventually gonna get Rhino down the road, but now you're getting now this part right now becomes the electric eel for helping out Electro. So that still kind of plays in the fact. I don't know how you would do it, but I would keep that part. You get that intensity, you get that fight, you keep the theme music, and I yeah, I wouldn't put the whole Sinister Six out there. What they did wrong was they added too much of that. They're trying to rush it, that's the problem. It's, it's like fans wanted it and they're like, oh, let's go with the fans want, but it's like you got to build it up properly. Right, exactly. Now, here's another problem. You got Norman. Norman Oscorp, I don't I wish he would not die. Let's put it that way. Different actor. I I want to say give him a different actor, more evilish actor who I would portray as him. Oh. What I would probably say to be the parent of the kid that we saw now that's playing that plays um, Harry Osborn. I I think I would have to go with um, the guy that played Sinestro. Sinestro and... And Green Lantern. And then the oh, bad guy in Shazam. Yes. I yeah. think I would have gone with him being Norman Osborn. He has that look of Devon there. 
He has that smart look that in in the in, especially in the suit and stuff like that. But this time now he's an icon. He's a peacon. He's he's the owner of Oz Corporal wants nothing better. So obviously he's gonna have those um, traits of him being, let's say, uh, you know, e not evilish, but like I know it all type of stuff and smart snurs. He's perfect for that. Perfect for it. Keep him as that. You know, I don't know about the accent though. Maybe the accent probably would change. Or probably he could be that could be his thing if probably uh, Harry Osborne went to a English tutor to have, get help him get rid of the accent they oh, supposed to have. There you go, there you go, because his wife was English, man. Yeah. Okay. The mom was uh, American. Okay, I got you. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, good. Thank you for chiming in on that. So yeah, I'm here. <laughs> so yeah, you keep that role. You keep that into there. Um, you don't let go of that. I would keep that in the role. Spider Man does his own spiel of everything. Um, now, how would I put this at the end? I think the end would be more or less, even at that, the middle of the movie, you get Electro, you figure out that, you know, something happened at Oscorp, what it was, so now Spider-Man's trying to figure out, you know, uh, what's happening in there. Now you hear from Dr. Connors that, look, there was more stuff happening at Oscorp that was under my belt that I did not know, but here's, here's this place, here's that place, you know, look into it and investigate, so Gwen gets in. So does Peter Parker. They, you know, obviously they look into it and they kind of figure out what happened to, happened to Electro. Electro then is, like you said, trans transferred to a different location. Here, here's another thing. The scientist that worked on him wasn't that scientist. It could have been that scientist and it could have been that actor. But I would name instead of naming him whatever they named him, I would have named him Doctor Otto Octavius. Oh, Doctor Octavius. And then and he's the doctor. That's investigating like what it is that makes you electro, what it is that creates this too as well. How did you get like this? Norman wants to know. Norman wants to, let's say, make more of. He wants to kind of like develop. Probably is not about make more of. Maybe he wants to figure out how he can utilize it for his company. There you go. If it's self electricity, yes. How can I do this? I save myself money. Norman, Norman Osborne is more about not being poor, like exactly. not paying too much on electricity. Right. So if self electricity helps out, what did you do? Yes, exactly. So how did that happen? So he has Dr. Otto Octavius working him out. You also got Smythe, which I did not know they had him in there, but he was in there. And, and as, yes, he was. He was played by the Office character. The uh, the uh, look look it up. Sp Amazing Spider-Man two and the look up for Cass. I'll show you who he's talking about. So so Smythe was in there, but also even Black Cat was put in there. Felicia yeah, Hart, she was in there. The I actress that played in Rogue Star Wars. You guys, that was crazy. She portrayed that actress. That was a surprising part to it. So here you go. You. The thing with Spider-Man, it's okay to put these names in there. It's okay to put these actors and actresses because it also helps the development of future films, right? So this helps with a Sinister Six, in a sense. But I wouldn't, again, like I'm not putting out there that I would want to go with Sinister Six, but it helps with spin-offs, okay? So you get that part. Then all of a sudden, as you're trying to figure that out, they investigate, they let go, something happens with Gwen, Okay. Uh, Oscorp finds out that Gwen's looking into their I information because like how she did, she got caught up with the credentials and all that stuff. So Norman gets her, grabs his henchmen, they take her to a building, uh, whatever clock tower, and they try to talk to her and all that type of stuff. Spider-Man tries to go to the safe, and sure enough, she dies. dies. She dies. Okay? She dies. Let's it go. So now that is not cool, man. It's not cool at all. So he goes in the rut. It happens for a while. Dr. Connors is trying to reach out. Can't reach out. Then something else happens where they... Uh, now they end up... Your, his Okay, Uncle Ben finally goes to the grocery store. It's not necessarily you know, his fault because, in a sense, he could have brought Peter Parker with him. Like, Uncle Ben says, you know, hey, I'm going to the grocery store, you know... Do you want to come with me? You know, I need you to go with me. They have an argument. They have a fight. Like, leave me alone. You need to get out. Da, da, da. So now Uncle Ben goes to the store and boom. Someone shoots him. He dies too. Now another bad thing happens to uh, Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield now freaks out and says, I could have done. I could have helped out. I could have been there. Another dark role for him. Another dark turn for Andrew Garfield's character. 
which it's intense of how it happens. But go ahead. What happened? I'm looking for. It's taking long to load. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So another dark turn. Now that's two deaths in one movie. I know that's pretty intense and high for you guys, but this is something that you could have put in that just make. Let's put it this way: it just would have created a better Spider-Man at the end because it's more bad things happening to him, and it's realistic. But it's also the development of this particular Spider-Man that I can overcome the greater good. I can be better than anybody and stuff. Or not be better than anybody, but be better for the city and for the people that's around me than I should have. Should have been. Right? Yeah. So I'm gonna now I'm determined to bring Oscorp down because that little henchman also too was probably the henchman from you know that worked yeah. with Oscorp or whatever the case would be. So now he has a little goal, right? So that begins the whole. To figure out who that henchman is. That, too. Yes, jeez. What if henchman? The henchman is. Uh, Shocker. Yeah. I would have all Shocker. I would have been him before that. It's S funny. We both have Shocker in our yeah, list. Yeah, because he's a he's a, one of those guys where it's like you know it's just role. He's a he's a good you know mini role to the guy. Never mm -hmm. really big a big henchman, big fighter against Spider Man, but it just you know he's a henchman in general uh, to fight against. So you put him out oh. there. And maybe he becomes Shocker because they create uh, gloves mm -hmm. off of Electro's uh, electricity. Bam! You got it, son. So you have that. And now all of a sudden, you're trying to figure out what's happening with Electro at over that, that location. Now, Electro's not necessarily bat mad at Spider-Man, right? Not mad at Spider-Man at all. So you keep him in there uh, trying to figure out what's happening still within Electro. You get Electro out of jail... You let him go. Electro then kind of just wreaks havoc in front of the city because he's trying to escape. spider Man's trying to control him. spider Man then fight and all that stuff, whatever. You have that scenario. Um, whatever the case may be. And in a sense, Electro's more, more of wanting the city to uh, go down because he doesn't want Oscorp to succeed. Spider-Man doesn't realize this. Spider-Man thinks that he's just trying to destroy the city in the sense of for badness or whatever case may be right so they catch him electro's electro gets caught up with spider-man obviously that big old scene i don't know how it happens but he ends up losing so he goes into jail again too as well and then you know why did you find something to shut his electricity down that too so yeah. that that goes there so now oscorp shows up at the end of the movie that you see you know listen it's not over you just keep the idea it's not over to electro in, especially in jail. Dr. Octavius keeps looking. He creates the metal arms in order to help Electro so he doesn't touch him with his hands. So he has those metal arms too as well. So it's a different, it's a different setup than that. So okay, keep going, keep going. I'm actually looking at it and trying to figure out if I can... I'll show you, I'll show you. So yeah. So yes, that kind of goes into play, you guys. Right there. Oh, that guy? That guy. He was Alexander... Oh, Smythe, okay. Yes, he would have been Smythe. He was, he's the kid that's with, uh, with what's a kingpin in Spider-Man cartoon, and he was and in he the wheelchair. One, like, he he was able to stand up later on because that one little creature looking thing? Yeah, mutated with those laser beam things on the shoulders, pads, or whatever, belonging like that. So, yes. So, Norman Osborn plays more of an impact of being the evil -ish guy in this one. And now the third and final film. You get set up. You get set up. There's no more Gwen. There's no Uncle Ben. There's only, with great power comes with great responsibility aspect of it for number three. Spider-Man's now definitely an older, older guy from college and stuff. And more wise because of what happened in part two. All the badness, basically. You finally, still working with Dr. Connors. Dr. Connors is now with his family. Electro's still in jail. What's it called? Doc Ock has the, his arms and stuff like that, but not ready to use them. But in a sense, he's not the evil. He's not the big henchman fighter against him still again just yet. So, figures out what's going on with Oscorp. You go into Oscorp. You try to shut everything down. Now you have the big fight with Green Goblin. Oh, nice. It's a final setup with Green Goblin. So Green Goblin now, you obviously have him all, you know, they have the big fight scene, and it's, that's pretty much the story. You get the love interest. Well, Mary Jane, they become a better love interest. <clears throat> and then, you know, they have their big fight scene, of course. Again, he gets caught up at the end of the movie. 
and now you get your spin-offs. Now you can work your way into the spin-offs that you want. What's your face, Felicia Harden? Who that's the Felicia Harden that plays Black Cat? Yeah. Okay, so Felicia Harden is still working for Oscorp. Hardy. Still, right, huh? Hardy. Hardy. So now she's still working for Oscorp. She's still helping them out. But now she's starting to see the badness. So now she gets her little thing to become Black Cat. I don't know how, but it's within Oscorp. So she ends up finding out within the movie. So now you can you can also get the spinoff movie that you wanted for Black Cat into it and give her a past, give her a future storyline. Maybe she moved from the city and went somewhere else, and now she's becoming Black Cat too as well. You could have kept that storyline out. Yeah. Spinoff. So you end part three with everyone in jail. Dr. Otto Octavius is gonna bail him out and say look look Norman we couldn't do this separately so we're gonna, gonna have to do it together that's not a bad idea so you got Shocker you got Norman you got Oscorp uh, Dr. Octavius you got Electro now you're missing two other guys the, it's not gonna be the Lizard because the Lizard's a good guy and it's not gonna be <clears throat> it's it, it's not gonna be uh, what's it called um you forget to add in Rhino. Yeah, Rhino, because he's not in there just yet. So, yeah. you those are the two people you could add. You could add a Rhino because of mutation with animals. Doctor Octavius worked on a guy that another henchman that he figured was a football player, and he had nothing left in him or whatever the case would be. So there was an experiment he did, and boom, you got Rhino. And for Rhino, you could also use that guy from uh, who came out in the Turtles as Raphael, and came out. Yes. And- Exact. Uh, yes, there you go. He could be Rhino in that film. Mm-hmm. So you got that added addition. You got freaking uh, the Shocker. If I'm not mistaken, did I say the Shocker already? Yeah. Or no, no, so, no you actually. You said uh, Green Goblin. Green Goblin. Doc Ock. Doc Ock. Electro. Uh, Electro and... Um, oh, yeah. So this... Dang, got Green Goblin. Electro. You, oh, lizard. 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 No, not Lizard. So it's not going to be Lizard. Oh, because okay. Lizard's working with Spider-Man. So you're going to have... You're going to have, yeah, Doc Ock, uh, Norman Osborn. You're going to have Electro. So this should be Shocker. This would be Rhino because Octavius is working on the mutation even more. And then number four, number the sixth guy member would end up being, probably if my eyes, I would definitely add, could be, um, oh, Cheta. Who would you add? I don't know if you could add Mysterio. You could add Mysterio. You yeah, could, you could add, still add Mysterio. You could still add Mysterio and you could add it the fits, way you were uh, brought him in. Yeah, it fits the role. To cast them though, um, somebody in Andrew Garfield style casting, you yeah. would need somebody who's very good at acting more of a darker role than Parker's, because Parker is not that much of a dark role. Yeah. So for Mysterio, you would need somebody like um, the guy who plays uh, Voldemort in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, there you go. Sure. Not Lord of the Rings, uh, Voldemort in Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. Yeah. I could go with that. Seen Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, I could have gone with that. It would have been nice. So yeah, that would have been my first. That would have been my trilogy. Okay. Yeah. I would have ended off with Green Goblin, um, fighting off with Spider Man and having that real man. You messed up my family. You got my Uncle Ben killed. My parents are dead because of you. My girl's dead because of you. I'm finally coming after you. This is that movie where me and you are going head to head. It's all everything's on the table. We're done. That's it. So. It's that big, big old scenario with all that. It could be the last fight, too. Like, he's been taking care of all of them, and this is, like, the last major bad guy fight. And at that, too, as well. You have evidence that all that happened. So so that's why he gets in the court, and that's how he gets locked up, for sure. And everything gets passed over to Harry. So now Harry's in charge of Oscorp. But it still doesn't give Harry that big role, like, now they're intending to do with him of becoming a goblin. Now, just keep him out there. Let him do that. He can just be, you know, the head, the henchman there at that company, and you know, eventually. Probably trying to do the right thing with the company. Right at that too as well, or even at that, you know what, you know, I didn't, I can't believe you, Peter. You got my dad arrested and all that type of stuff. So I'm well, gonna help out with this. Doesn't know who Peter is as Spider Man, so he probably thinks Peter is cool, but Spider Man is bad. Yep. So yeah. Yeah. So you I go like with it. that. Yeah, I okay. like it. I know it's because. intense. All right, fans. I know it's intense. <laughs> I know it's a lot of, you know, killing or whatever. But you got to look at what they were doing with Spider-Man when the first movie came out. They were really trying to get the feel of why 
why did the parents pass? Why is this kid, why would this kid be happy, cheesy, go lucky in high school like they've shown in the cartoons and the freaking, uh, you know, Tobey Maguire's verse? And that, that even now with Tom Holland's verse, guys, why would it be so cheesy when he knows his parents are gone? Do you not want to know what happened? Do you not know no. what happened with Uncle Ben? Like, th- like, there's no feeling to that. That's the thing about Holland is it, it seems like they never mentioned his Uncle Ben at all. Yeah. So probably uh, May wasn't married in that one. Maybe. I don't know. This It's speculation. And it's crazy. So, you know, that's why you put it out there. I know it's weird. To have a Spider-Man be such a not say dark sense, but also have a serious tone to it. But it just it gives a better story to Spider-Man to really show you guys that Spider-Man is more than what you know this goofy guy in sense. This is why he's becoming a hero. This is why he's also one of Marvel's greatest heroes of yeah. everything that he had overcome in his own personal life. So I leave it at that. I like that. Yeah, I like it too. Okay. I- I like how you actually continue the continuation of the parents' mm-hmm. uh, storyline and how you built Norman Osborn not to die. Yeah, not to die. Don't kill no Vic, Don't kill nobody at this point right now. Don't kill anybody. Leave everybody up. You keep Norman on there because he's a he's the main antagonist for Spider-Man. So he has to, you know, there's a reason how you keep lasting and living. How do you keep staying alive, basically? Well, here you go. You don't die in this one. You keep him alive. You have him going to jail for everything he did wrong. Well, you know, he even necessarily admitted everything, but yeah, he caught him on camera on you know, part number three while they're fighting and stuff, and obviously showing that he's the Green Goblin, so that's why he's in jail. So now in number four, you still have Jane and Jonah Jameson, or if there is number four, but even the story, you still have Jane and Jonah Jameson thinking that you know Spider Man made you know Green Goblin you know take his uh, take his uh, uh, what's it called kind of what's that when you know take the crime put the crime under him and stuff like that in a sense take the blame for the crime here you go take the blame no no there's a different way there's the word right it's not set up it's something else uh when you take the blame for somebody else's crime and you didn't do it yeah well, it's but that's the like se- set up it's kind of that sense you guys like he J. jonah jameson would have sent the media in the sense of like spider-man made green goblin you know admit to everything that spider-man truly did basically you know keeping that negative limelight on spider-man I can't stuff. figure out the name of it too. I'm trying I know. to like to sip on my tongue right now. And exactly. So that's how I will put it, you guys. I hope you guys like that. I don't know. You guys let me know what your comments and stuff like that is on there and we'll go from there. But as always, you know, there's more to be done. The Tom Holland's verse isn't done. We still got a lot more to go. Will we get a Spider-Man 3, Amazing Spider-Man 3 with Andrew Garfield? Or would they just come back one more time to team up with Holland? There you go. Or they, will they come back one more time? I see that again. Yeah, so it would be nice. So it would be good setup for that. So, I mean, what, anything else I meant to add on to that? No, I think you dropped off everything, your, your choices and everything. Your, the thing that I realized is how you went from revamping it. Yeah. But still keeping the bad guys, like several of the bad guys, but switching things over. Yeah. And I just went from three all the way over. <laughs> from part four to the next. Like, I just kept going instead of, like, fixing things. Yeah. Uh, I agree. There are things I wish I would have fixed myself in my Spider-Man series. Like, one, I would have made Kristen Dunst Gwen Stacy. Yeah. Because she makes a pretty blonde. She right. looks perfect as a blonde, but I think they, the fans would have known more Mary Jane than Gwen. So, that's why they went True. with Gwen in mine. Right, and that's um, why I wanted. That's why I didn't want them to kill off Mary Jane in when they added her in part two, but they kill off her deleted scene. Like they didn't, they didn't have the material that they had for Mary Jane. The actress that was gonna portray her would have been perfect to be Mary Jane, especially for Andrew Garfield. They, they, if they would have added her in the first film, yes, I understand that it's Mary Jane, so it has to carry some name to it. But you don't necessarily have to give it too much, like. You know, give it a little taste for fans to appreciate. And it's if you own the rights, why not abuse it in that sense? If you own the rights to that, why not be able to use it? You know, and be like, you know, we put it in there and it's just a building block to what we really want to get to. That's what Marvel does. That's the, that's, that's the same sense they do. DC is starting to do that. What's it called? Freaking Zack Snyder did it for Justice League. Where when he built the block the way it's supposed to where yeah. he added little bits and pieces here. Yeah, I just rewatched it right now, and you—we didn't realize, but Adam, the Adam is in the movie. Yes. Yes. 
I know that. Yeah, he becomes the... Okay, so you remember the Asian scientist that took over for Cyborg's father of the company, right? Oh, him? Yes. He eventually... If you look up his name on DC, on Google, whatever, you see that he will eventually become Adam. I didn't even know that. See? I didn't, I'm like... I just... I kept wondering... could have done that with Mary Jane. You could have kept her as a secret name. Thank you. Stop then. So, like, you could have kept her as... Uh, and then, at the end of, like, after Gwen Stacy dies... Yes! Uh, probably in the next film, it would be like, oh, you know, and we have... Uh, on the third film, it would be like, oh, we have somebody here for you. Yeah. Uh, blind Date, which is the way that the, she was actually introduced into the comics. Well, there you go. Blind Date with her. Yeah. And, so it's, and like, it's the grandparents. They work out... Uncle Ben and uh, Uncle Ben and Aunt May, they work out a deal. Let's give you a blind date, Peter. You haven't been out in a while, so blah, blah, blah. Here, here you go. Boom. Yeah. So, bam. See and you're saying? right about one thing. There's a storyline where ben, Uncle Ben doesn't die, but Peter, Peter Parker still becomes Spider-Man. Yeah. So that would be an interesting thing if Andrew Garfield became Spider-Man, lives a different life than Toby's, and yes. he doesn't lose his uncle. Exactly. He doesn't lose his uncle. He still had it. But, again... You didn't really have a good relationship with Uncle Ben because you were living the resentment of how come you guys are not telling me about my my parents? Like, why is it so quiet about them? Exactly. So that begins the 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 the, the itchiness in him to want to figure out what's wrong with the past, what's wrong with his parents. So it drives him even more to Oscorp to figure out the story. It drives him more, and it draws him in to kind of figure out as a as a detective in a sense like how Batman is to figure out what the hell happened and it just keeps him in in trouble because he's always around Oscorp and doing you know all this stuff that's happening and he's somewhat in a sense the purpose of that because Oscorp wants to figure out is this person a good test against Spider-Man will it match up will we figure out so I like that that's why keep Uncle Ben that's why you make this you make each story movie especially the reboots different from the other well how do you do that you make this one unique in that sense you don't kill him off you didn't have to you could have kept and then yeah because then it would make it would be interesting to see what what happens they could keep Ben and uh, mm -hmm. May just as home characters yep there you go alright and like that's how it is alright anything else no you pretty much cleaned up <laughs> everything I wanted to clean up for that and we pretty much she did a great job on this and that was awesome yeah that was great. All right, guys. Well, it's me, Tony Kid. As always, signing off. We appreciate you guys. This is, like we said, our final episode of for season fifth, number five. Season number five, you guys. Been on this for quite some time, everybody. We truly appreciate you guys. It's time to take a break. <laughs> a very good break. A nice little, yes, yeah, like nice little time break. We're enjoying the holidays with our family, just like we hope you guys do too, as well. And just get some vacation on our end or whatever. We'll yeah. be back. We'll, yeah, we're well, still going to be on poise. Yeah, we're going to have some episodes. Right. Uh, we are going to do a few changes. So prepare. We're going to announce, like, next year we're going to focus more on Just Us Rejects. Not yes. Just Us. Uh, let's Talk About It. It's going to be a main show now. I feel like that's our niche. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's Talk About It because it gives us a good platform for us to discuss a lot of our movie changes or different scenarios of what they're going for with TV shows and all that stuff. Tonight so. with Tony the Kid is going to be a thing going on for now it. on. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still going to keep... Uh, rejects in the booth that's still gonna be around uh -huh. uh, sometimes it might just be Tony by himself in the booth or Zach attack on you know Zach the Mac in the booth by himself or SJ3 in the booth by himself yeah but we are gonna have a reject in the booth yeah exactly <laughs> even if it's all three or four of us right uh, date night is gonna be um come as it goes yeah so we are gonna have date night we just don't know what days, what movies, but <laughs> be prepared. It's yes. going to be spectacular from what Tony Kid was talking about. So, well, thank you. You know, we have four shows. Of course, we have the Just Us Rejects, which is what we did now with uh, our Christmas episode. Christmas special. And what we're doing now with this episode, this is Just Us Rejects. That's right. So, thank you all. As always, I'll have, a, you know... A Merry Christmas if y'all listening to this during Christmas. Mm -hmm. A Happy New Year. And we will see you when we come back for our special on the Reject Rumble, the Reject Super Bowl, <laughs> Reject Mania, you know, all, all that, that good stuff. stuff. Get That's ready. True. That's right. All right, guys. Well, you guys have a good stuff. Good night. Y'all be safe. Peace.